Hi, so it's Carrie again. I am in the shop today to show you guys my process for drilling holes into whatever I want pretty much to make planters out of pretty much anything that I want. At first I just had a drill, a screw gun as my husband would call it, that one right there. Um, and I had some masonry bits that I picked up at a local hardware store. Um, and it worked okay. It just took a lot of time for me to get it through. Um, then I ordered some diamond uh, hole saw bits. I might have the wording on that confused. That goes machinery. I don't know. Um, and that worked pretty good, pretty well for the first one. After that, it got difficult again. Um, and then my husband introduced me to the drill saw. Drill saw? Drill saw? This glorious bit of power equipment. And I drilled through several of these this weekend. So I'm just going to show you what I did. So I did kill my diamond uh, tipped hole saw bit um, because it was cheap. It was cheap on Amazon. What do you expect? I was impressed it lasted as long as it did. Um, and then my other one that I had bought for masonry bits um, was dull pretty quickly. So I am destroying these things drilling through at coffee mugs, but that's okay. I just, that's what they're for, right? I will have to invest in a nice one. Until then, my husband had this one that came with some concrete anchors that he had. Um, and it seemed to work pretty well. Now, he did not leave this set up for me. And he does not have the key to tighten it correctly. So as I'm filming this, it might not work so well, but we're going to try so the first thing I want to bring to your attention is that I do have a vise sitting here and I have cardboard surrounding my coffee cup. Oh look, that's wet. Probably because it was outside in the rain today. And you want to tighten it, but you don't want to squeeze it. So prevent movement, but not creating pressure on the ceramic. So that's tight to touch. It's not going to go anywhere. I can move the actual bit, I mean vice, to help me get it to where it's supposed to be. I can move this down like, yeah, it's not exactly center. I might adjust it a bit, but I'm not going to overthink it because it's just a drainage hole. I mean, who's going to be turning over the coffee pot and thinking to themselves, hmm, it's not perfectly center. I'm not buying this. The other thing that you're going to need that came in pretty important is some source of water. I have this spray bottle. You might recognize it from uh, the free spray bottle that I use to plant peppers. Um, but it doesn't have to be a spray bottle. It's just some way of keeping this surface wet because it does get quite hot. And the water ends up boiling a bit. I'll show you. I'm just going to flip this baby on. And then it's spinning. I'm just going to crank it down a little. Wow! That one actually worked. <laughs> Probably the fastest yet. Granted, it was probably the thinnest coffee cup yet. So let's check it out. Now, one flaw of this method is that it tends to break out a good chunk from the inside. I don't mind, though, because I'm going to be filling it with dirt. So as long as it's still sturdy enough to hold some weight of dirt, it's fine. Uh, there is going to be some powdered ceramic or glass around on it, so I will wash it out, uh, rinse it out really well before I plant anything in it. Oops, almost forgot the water. I was too busy controlling the camera roll. Oh, that's fast. 
impressed. I am so impressed with my husband's uh, anchor. Concrete anchor bit. I guess when things are made to uh, drill through concrete, they're a little bit stronger. Oh, look how much that one busted out. Yeah, it's fine. A little tap test, and we're good. This one I've already begun, and I'm trying to go a little bit slower because if you go slower, there is less breaking out on the other side. But it was starting to boil up on me. I wonder if you guys see that. See the bubbles forming? So just give it a rest. Time to soak. Um, I like how the water changes colors whenever it's working. Okay, I'm going to turn the camera off. I know you don't want to sit here and watch me do this all day. Since I am going a bit slower on this one. Nope, didn't help. It still busted out possibly worse than the rest, even though that method was working well this weekend. Go figure. The other problem I had was that my drill bit just came right on up out of there. So I'll have to tighten it back in. Okay, so I'm back in the house now and I'm getting ready to replant these nasturtiums into these cups that I have prepared. Now these four I just did today. You saw me do three of them if all of the cuts make the, if all the takes make the cut. But I also have this Eastery one where I'm pretty sure it was printed incorrectly. Pretty sure Easter eggs go the other way and so do bows, but whatever. It's fun. That and it's got a little bit of extra picture on the inside there. Um, I did this one and this one inside with the drill um, using, I believe this one was the diamond hole saw bit, but um, you can see it looks pretty good as far as the breakout goes. It's very minimal, but that, that method did take a lot longer. Now granted, if I just invest in a nicer uh, bit, then might be best of both worlds where it's not breaking open so much and uh, it's faster. So, I replanted some yesterday. I'll show you those after we're done. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. I have six cups prepared. And one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, nasturtiums ready. Now, I am not going to do one per pot. I'm not sure if that's what I'm supposed to do, if they'll be healthier if I do. Uh, but by doing two per, per pot, um, they go a little bit longer. So I guess currently I'll only be using three of these, but I have more nasturtiums that are ready to be repotted as well. The ones in the cereal bowls were just my biggest concern because they're all in there competing for root space and nutrients. And so since they sprouted up so quickly... Um, I think they're ready to get their own home. So, what I did, so I first filled my containers, mostly with just potting soil. This is potting soil. I had a bag outside, but instead of filling it up outside, I just got a giant bowl and filled it up with the potting soil that I'm, I'll be using, which is the only potting soil that I have. And I'm not filling it up exactly all the way because I want some room for the roots to go down and get established um, and not be sitting on the top but I'll fill in the rest of the room with um, potting soil after I get the plants in I like to go ahead and dump these straight into the potting soil. Ooh, that was a rough landing, little nasturtiums. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for doing this one-handed. Um, so that they're not just open air too bad. They get a little bit more protection that way. So here's two. Those actually came out really well as far as big chunks of soil. And I'm just going to put them in here. 
Now, I don't know if nasturtiums survive as container plants, but I am planning on selling these. So if it doesn't work out or they get unhealthy or whatever, I trust that the plant owner will fix it, will do something about it. Uh, you want to put soil on both sides so it stands up. Don't <laughs> just leave it laying down, you. Okay. Now, to save a little bit of time, I'm going to go ahead and do the rest without filming. That is basically my process. If I get one that's trying to lay down like that one was... Now, I do see that the stem's a bit curved, but I'll just put a little bit of extra soil on that side to promote it standing up a little bit straighter. Okay, I got all six of those nasturtiums replanted. I did notice these leaves are not looking just the healthiest. Um, maybe they'll perk up now that they have a little bit more room, a little bit more nutrients. Uh, I also wanted to show you these little labels I made. I don't love that they're clear, but hey, you use what's free. Uh, so for my original plantings, I used these fancy ones that I got off of Amazon. But I realized I was running out of those quickly. I definitely would have already run out had I used these for all of the nasturtiums I've already planted. Nasturtiums. Uh, so instead, I got an old bottle and I cut it up and uh, I just wrote it on there. Now, it is a little bit hard to see from far away, but I don't mind that. If the future owners want to make a better one, that's fine. But that's fine. Here are some of the nasturtiums I've planted, replanted so far. If this one I know I did yesterday and it looks good. It looks happy. Here's some more up here. They look fine. There's no immediate wilting. Now these are all kind of leaning towards the UV light. Um, the claw. But let's flip them a little bit and let them kind of change the way their stems going, and hopefully that will make their stem stronger as well. Uh, but like I said, I don't know if nasturtiums make for good container pots. But, you know, this year for me is all about experimenting. Uh, while you're here, I am proud to announce that Mr. Roseberry finally has a friend. Yay! No longer so lonely. I am also happy to announce that as of this morning, the Rista green chilies are... <laughs> They're sprouting. There's three right there. There's a bigger one right here. You do have a little clump of dirt on you, silly. You don't need that. Um, Hubs says that the Colorado green chili is called the Pueblo green chili because it is from Pueblo, Colorado, whereas the New Mexico hatch green chili is grown in Hatch, New Mexico. And then, you know, because I'm just so obsessed with my plants, look, there's a tomato. That's the first sprout I saw, and that's from a yellow pear. But I also have these other ones, little bitty guys, like those. Those are from, oh, I don't know how to say it correctly, the Vernisage, 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 art colors, and they're like grape or cherry tomatoes. They're little guys. So while I am sitting here with my pups, and we are all happy and healthy, <laughs> I have to tell you what happened. So every morning, my dogs uh, wake up when my alarm clock for work go off, and they're like, they'll come and they'll kind of jump on the bed, like, pet me, pet me. And I do. I give them a few pets and that helps wake me up. And so then I go downstairs and I let them outside for the morning to take care of business and just to run around while I'm getting ready. So morning as usual, I go downstairs, I let them out. But as soon as I start heading downstairs, <laughs> I smell something. It smells like something's cooking. And I'm like, well, that's weird. 
So, I let the dogs out, and I'm still thinking about this. Like, it smells like something's cooking. Maybe it's wafting in from neighbors, but we don't have neighbors super, super close. Uh, I don't know what it could be, though. It's not like I'm cooking anything. I just woke up. And then I remembered. <laughs> I remembered that I was sanitizing eggshells to crush into powder uh, because it helps with their digestion, which is a whole different story. Um, and I thought to myself, I turned those off last night before I went to bed, right? Yeah, I turned those off. Or did I? So I got to thinking about it, and I was like... I didn't, I don't think I, I didn't turn those off. So I ran back downstairs as quickly as I could. And there the stove was still on. Um, propane, so actual fire there. Uh, cooking eggshells that definitely did not have any water left. Uh, so I turned it off as quickly as I could. And then I got some water. I just like started getting cups of water and dumping it. And you could hear it sizzling. And, guys, I could have died. I could have died so easily from that fire burning uh, if it would have caught on fire, but it didn't. By the grace of God, it did not catch on fire. That would have been a disaster. Ah, I'm so blessed, y'all. I am blessed. The stove was burning all night uh, for hours and hours and hours. And it didn't catch on fire. That is amazing. And in fact, I'm not going to show you because I don't think you really care enough. But they're still sitting there. The eggshells and what water I dumped on them this morning. And the pot doesn't even look scorched. And it's not like these are fancy expensive pots. It's just amazing that worse things did not happen even by a little bit. Okay, so... That's my story that I'm still just thinking on. What a miracle it is that something worse didn't happen. So I'm still healthy, still happy. Got some pups who are healthy and happy. This one over here is quite muddy from the ring today. You see them dirty paws. She's got some dirty paws. Yeah, I'm talking about your paws. I am. All right. Well, that's all for today's episode. Bye.